Um, there are a number of uh, schemes and initiatives, both operated by UK government and the private sector regulators. Um, there is an abundance of these coming out and what I'm trying to do is to describe how we can put those into a structure and how we can identify some of the areas that we perceive as being missing and then how we can work collaboratively to try and fill those gaps and make a much more cohesive answer to the whole cybersecurity issue from a professional services perspective and a delivery of certifications. I think from, from my perspective what I'd like to, to, to take away is the idea that there's a big picture. So in other words, there are a number of smaller initiatives. Some of those are quite large, but there's a number of initiatives happening. And if we can actually combine those together in some cohesive manner, then we're going to deliver real benefits to both the community within the UK, but I also think that we can internationalise the offering and therefore we can actually help UK PLC deliver what I think is an excellent service to other, other, other organisations in, in different regions. So, so we've been working within Crest for a number of years, looking at the professionalisation of the industry. So what we've been trying to do is to establish standards for organisations providing professional services. I think those standards are beginning to bed in, and I think organisations from the buying community now need to understand how they procure those services in a structured fashion. We've also been working very hard to professionalise the individual. So in other words, to provide both a career path and professional qualifications. And what we need to do now is to understand what those are, provide, if you like, pathways through to help people develop and progress. And then we also need to recognise those in terms of their ability to introduce really good calibre individuals into the marketplace and give them a real career opportunity to move forward in what I think is a really fascinating, exciting industry. But in terms of the marketplace, I think the market is demanding to have professional services delivered by knowledgeable, skilled and competent individuals and they need to work within a trusted environment that's had some accreditation. So in other words, that combination of a trusted company with skilled, knowledgeable, competent people is what the buying community are now beginning to demand. Those, I think, are beginning to be de facto standards. I don't ever want them to be a standard because I think at that point you don't have to work so hard, but I think if you understand how those two things interact and the buying community realises there's real benefits, then I think that will help. Within Crest, we operate really stringent codes of conduct, uh, both on the organisations and on the individuals. So if an organisation signs up that they will adhere to the policies, processes and procedures that they've submitted to us, and therefore the buying community has now got somewhere to go if they've got a problem with the service provision, which they've never had before. If we strike somebody off, in other words, an organisation is removed from our register, in the UK, it's going to be really difficult for them to do work in UK financial services. We have a back-to-back -back agreement, agreement with um, CSG, the UK government, um, where they operate their schemes. And whilst we can't say why we'd have removed a company, I think if we deemed it as being serious enough, they could actually be removed from their register as well. So all of a sudden, there's quite a big stick. We don't ever want to use it. We want to see improvements in terms of the conduct and, and what people are actually providing. But as, if necessary, we can remove a company. On an individual basis, again, they sign up to a code of conduct which links them to the company. What that says is that we can either, much more binary, we can either keep them in, throw them out, or throw them out for a little while. Um, normally, that doesn't mean very much. So if it's a... If it's some of the professional bodies, it doesn't actually have a material impact in terms of your ability to work. The Crest qualifications, because they're tied into the provision of the service, is almost a license to trade. So in other words, to remove that certificate from an individual has quite a significant impact in both their employability and the rate they're likely to get in the marketplace. So all of a sudden, for the first time in the IT industry, we have effective codes of conduct which are actually meaningful, enforceable and, and have some uh, consequence if, if they're not adopted. So Cyber Essentials Scheme is broken down into two areas. So you've got Cyber Essentials and Cyber Essentials Plus. It's a certificate that's issued by the UK government. Um, basically, under Cyber Essentials, that's the absolute baseline that organisations should do, and it's almost a self-assessment. So, so it's a good thing to do as a checklist to go through to make sure you've got some concept of some of the technical controls in place. Uh, my strong recommendation for an audience such as this is they should be looking at Cyber Essentials Plus, where we're doing a little bit more in terms of the validation, and we're also doing looking at the web applications, um, the um, internet, internet connections, and also the standard desktop builds. And that's the sort of thing, at a minimum, all the organisations at this conference should be looking at. 
What then happens is that you go through a certification process. So within Crest, we have um, currently 42 member companies that offer certification services. Um, the organisation can go to one of those certification bodies and they will do the review on behalf of the company and issue the certificate on behalf of the UK government. There are some variations in the scheme. There are another two accreditation authorities um, who have a slightly different approach, but we're all trying to move in the same direction in terms of providing a minimum standard in terms of moving the process forward. I'm really enthusiastic about Cyber Essentials, particularly at the Cyber Essentials Plus level. Um, we need to be very careful that we um, continue to get the consistency applied within the whole scheme. In other words, it, it means something to get the certificate. Uh, but when, once that's done, then we can use that as a platform to move forward in terms of other certifications or other forms of assessment that are already in place. And that's some of the things, again, I'm going to be talking about today. It's absolutely open to all organisations. So, so the first organisations we, we took through, Crest doesn't take them through, but one of our certification bodies took through, uh, was, for example, Barclays Online. Um, big chunky business um, and that had to work quite hard to make sure they're adhering to all the standards. You would expect them to and they did but again the proving of that is, is a reasonably large piece of work and then some of the other smaller organisations we've put through are very small and again it doesn't take so much because again you're doing some vulnerability scanning on their networks, you're having a look at their websites to make sure they, they are not open to things like cross-site scripting and some of the other more traditional problems that really shouldn't exist and we're looking at a standard desktop build. So for a very small organisation that's a very small piece of work but it's absolutely beneficial and it's absolutely meaningful in terms of the basic technical environment in which those organisations should work. Again, all of the companies here should be able to meet that standard and certainly there are moves within government to try to put it in terms of the procurement exercises that are available um, for people providing services. So again, the audience here should look to their supply chain at the very least to achieve Cyber Essentials Plus because if they can't do that, they really shouldn't be doing work either in local authorities or central government because they're really not up to scratch in terms of their cyber security. And for the ones with higher risk elements, in other words, they're processing personal information or they've got a larger scale operations, they should use that as a foundation to move forward to further assessments. So Cyber Essentials, I, th I think what it's going to do is it recognises that, that people are doing good things. Um, and, th and that's a good thing. So in other words, even at a basic level to say, yes, you've taken some basic steps, somebody externally has reviewed those steps that you've taken, and, and you're fit for purpose at that level is a really good thing. So, so that, that sort of reward for taking positive action, which hasn't been there before, is I think a real benefit. If you then look at that as being a platform to move forward in terms of getting recognition for some of the other more in-depth work that's been done, then I think again that's some of the subjects I'm going to be bringing up today. Should there be further recognition from those organisations that require much more significant or stringent security controls than those that are suggested under Cyber Essentials?